the first thing that I want to address here is how do we know that we're looking at the case where we may potentially have two possible triangles. Uh, the reason why we know here is because the information that we're given with the corresponding side and angle, in this case A, is looks like it's the smallest. Okay, 20.5 degrees is probably um, going to be the smallest angle, not necessarily, but probably going to be the smallest angle in the triangle. Um, and I also know that because the other side that they give us, side B, is 31, that's bigger than the side that they give us. So this is the case where there's the potential for more than one triangle. To reference, let's look back at um, what we had yesterday. This case that we looked at, A was 22 inches and 42 degrees, and B is 12 inches. So we know that angle B is going to be smaller than angle A, but in this case, because side B is bigger than side A, we know angle B is going to be bigger than angle A, so we have the potential for two possible triangles. So, yes? They're not special, no, but, um, I mean, what, what do you mean as far as, as special? I mean, they're, they're not 45, 4590 or 306090 or 345 or 51213, um, but this is just a special case of the law of signs. All right, so let's set it up. We have the sine of 20.5 degrees over 12 is equal to the sine of angle B over 31. Okay, so that means that B is going to be equal to the sine inverse of 31 sine of 20.5 degrees over 12. Okay, I just kind of did all the steps that we did yesterday in one. Cross multiply, divide, B is our angle, so we have to do the inverse trick. Uh, now, I know some of you are in the habit of resetting your calculators, so before you ever start these problems, you should always check and make sure that you're in degree mode. Okay. My calculator resets every time I close it on my computer, so I have to switch it. It's a good habit for you to be in um, to check that. All right, so the inverse sine of 31 sine of 20.5, close the parentheses over 12, close the big set of parentheses, gives us that angle B is approximately 64.783 meters. They gave us meters in this problem. Okay, now what we're going to do is I said that there was a possibility for two triangles. So that, oh wait, it's not meters, it's degrees, because I'm talking about the angle. My fault. Degrees. Um, I said that there's the potential for two triangles. So what you're going to do is you're going to use 64.783 as a reference angle. So you're going to do 180 minus that answer to get the other possibility for angle B. Okay, so angle B could also be 115.217 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to put that over the side. I'm going to finish solving using this for B. Okay, and then I will um, solve for C using the other angle as well. So if 64.783 is our uh, angle for B, then we're going to subtract the 20.5 and the 64.783 to get that angle C is approximately 94.717 degrees. And then we need to use our law of sines to solve for side C. So cross multiply 12 sine of our answer divided by the sine of 20.5 gives us that side C is approximately 34.149 meters. So that is one possible triangle. Um, and as always, you should check and make sure that 
the angles and sides match up. Okay, so smallest side, smallest angle, that works 12 and 20.5. Our next biggest angle was 64.783. That went with the side of 31. So that means our third side should be bigger than 31 and it plus 34.149. Okay, and that is our biggest angle of 94.727. Okay, so that's one possible triangle that comes out of this scenario. Uh, let's find the second possible triangle. So we already said that angle B was 115.217 degrees. So that means if we subtract the 20.5 and the 115.217, we get that angle C is 44.283 degrees. So we have the sine of 20.5 over 12 is equal to the sine of 44.283 over C. So crunch those numbers. We get that side C is approximately 23.924 meters. Again, let's check and make sure that everything works out. Um, so we know the smallest one works, okay, does the biggest one match up? Uh, the biggest angle is now angle B, 115.217. The biggest side is 31 because now side C is between 12 and 31. Um, so that does, that does check out, it passes our test. Okay. Now, to be honest, as far as this two solution case, um, none of the triangles yesterday uh, were had two possibilities. Okay? None of the triangles yesterday that I gave you had two possibilities. Um, your application problems will not have two possibilities. Honestly, I've, I've usually skimmed over this, um, but I am afraid that it may pop up on the final exam, so I did want to show it to you. Um, if you are going through problems and run across um, a problem with two solutions, this is why. Yes, sir. No, okay, so that, that was what I was trying to explain at the beginning. Um, if, so they gave us the information about angle A and side A, okay? And then they gave us information about B, which was bigger than side A. That is your um, indicator that you may potentially have two solutions, okay? If um, the extra piece of information they give you is bigger than the given information, that's where you'll have potentially two solutions. Um, and that's when you need to check it. Okay, so I'm just going to do this practice problem right here. But it's not that bad if you draw a picture and you start labeling. Okay, now I already have a triangle drawn, okay, but I encourage you to read the whole problem. Okay, this is what our triangle is going to end up looking like. Go ahead and read the whole problem though. Okay, don't just try and do it piece by piece. Read the whole problem first, because if you do that, then hopefully you're getting a little bit of a mental picture, especially when you get to the point where it says the point C is eight kilometers directly south of point A. So that must mean that we started up here and point C is down here. Surely at least you got that much and it's a triangle, so point B has to be on the left. Now I know that because of the directions. So now let's talk about the bearings, okay? So if we start at point A and it says that it goes in the direction south 52 degrees west of point B. So what you need to do is you need to draw yourself a little north, south, east, west line, okay? At each of these. Now if you don't know your directions, we might have problems. Never eat soggy waffles. Oh, well, never eat soggy waffles, okay? Starting at the top, never eat soggy waffles. Um, I don't know. I, mean, I just know that the right is east and the left is west. Right? East coast, west coast. <laughs> east North Carolina, west North Carolina. We. We. Okay, that's a good one. We. You read the word we. You read from left to right. 
hopefully everyone knows where it was at. I mean, we've got a big problem with where it was at. Anyways, okay, so here's how the variants work, okay? The variants work. The first letter is where you start. So it's south, so we're starting here on the south line, and we go that many directions towards west. Okay, so this little angle right here in my triangle is 52 degrees because I started on my south line and I moved 52 degrees towards west. Okay, that puts me at point B. So now I go to point B, draw my little north, south, east, west. Okay, I start south again, but this time I go 40 degrees towards east. Now be careful, that angle is not inside of our triangle. That angle is outside of our triangle. But if you think about the fact that this line right here, the north and the, excuse me, the south and the east form a 90 degree angle, what is this piece? That piece is 50. That's still not enough though. That's not our entire angle. Does anybody, I'm going to let y'all grapple with this one for a minute. Does anybody see uh, how it's on, it's on the other side too, though. Am I wrong, Sam? Okay, so what is that vertical angle? Does that technically be closer to 40 though? So it's kind of more than you figure out. So it's 100? You could, but I don't think it's quite... It's not quite enough information. Okay, Where, where's the right triangle? I mean, that is correct, but what if we extended this right here? <laughs> what if we extended that right there? See this right triangle right here? Now, we can do that because this is a north-south line right here. This right side of our triangle is the north-south line. So that means if I extend my east-west line, that forms, we've got a right triangle right up here, so if that's 52, what's this angle going to be? Oh, come on. 38. Okay, so this whole angle right here is 88. Okay, now they didn't tell us anything about the angle at C other than the fact that point C is 8 kilometers directly south of A. So we can label this side over here as 8 kilometers, but we now have two out of three angles in a triangle. So 88 plus 52 is 140. 88 plus 2 is 90. 90 plus 50 is 140. So that means that this angle down here is 40 degrees. <clears throat> so now... We have all of our angles. We need to find the total distance of the race course, so that means we need all the sides. We have one of the sides, so now we can set up the law of sines. Okay? So um, we have eight kilometers. What angle is corresponds to the eight? The 88, angle B. Now it doesn't matter which of the other two sides we find. Um, I typically start. Well, both of these are smaller, so I would I usually go with the smallest one. Okay, I'm going to go with the 40, and so that means I'm going to find side C first. So C is equal to 8 sine of 40 divided by the sine of 88. Okay, guys, you don't necessarily have to write this down every single time at this point. Um, now, on a quiz, yes, so that I can see your work, um, but... <clears throat> I'm just writing it down for when you look back at the notes so you know what happens, okay? So that's 5.145 kilometers. And then let's see here what would change in our law of sines. The angle that we use, our other angle was 52. And that would give us side A. So 8 sine of 52 divided by the sine of 88. Side A is approximately 6.308 kilometers. So when we add up all of our sides, we get that the total distance is... Okay. 
19.4.